Hello, I'm Joe Folger, one of the co-founders of the Institute for the Study of Conflict Transformation. For over 10 years, the Institute has sponsored work that's extended the transformative model of mediation to work in dialogue in political and public policy conflicts as well as ethno-political conflicts. And uh, the two people we have here today, Eric Clevin and Judy Saul, have led the efforts of working with this model in the public dialogue arena and ethno-political conflicts. Today they're going to talk with us about this work and its impact. Welcome to Judy and Eric. Thank you. Thanks. So uh, perhaps we could start by talking a little bit about how your prior experience with working in public dialogue and ethno-political conflicts sort of led you to thinking about an alternative way of doing dialogue processes that's now called transformative dialogue. What were the dissatisfactions or what were the, the issues that you felt needed to be addressed? Well, I've worked uh, for many years in different uh, post-conflict settings uh, in the former Yugoslavia and in the former Soviet Union and a little bit in Africa. Um, and what I was really doing was what is still referred to as peace building. And the idea uh, being that a third party or a, an organization from outside comes in and tries to contribute to activities that, that build peace. And that meant trying to engage people in the things that I thought were important for those societies in order to achieve peace and reconciliation, uh, to give training to people so they could go into uh, other communities and hopefully uh, propagate uh, more activities that would lead to peace. But what I found was that uh, in spite of all kinds of efforts to do this, it really didn't lead to um, the kinds of changes that I was hoping for. Um, I found that as long as people were employed in a project or were connected to an NGO, they would be involved in activities, but they, it didn't really ever take on a life of its own. And I think uh, one of the things I realized was that it was really my agenda that I was bringing in. It wasn't the agenda of people actually living in post-conflict communities, and so it wasn't really addressing what they were concerned about um, or offering a, a place where people could talk about the things that were of concern to them. So I guess uh, when I became familiar with the transformative model, I realized that uh, rather than me building peace, uh, I should really be there to support people, to listen to them, and to find out what they needed to be able to move forward in the way that they thought was best. And that involved a lot more listening um, and a lot more support for people to make their own kinds of decisions. Mm -hmm. My experience is parallel, um, and it's more in the context of community conflicts in the U.S. And um, I think of one example uh, where I had, I had been working with a group that was trying to decide on the siting of an incinerator. And uh, there were many community people involved. It was a long process. So we'd been meeting for months and gathering information and, and talking about the information. And I um, had planned this activity for the next session that was really going to have people break up into small groups and do some analysis of the data that had been gathered and come back to the large group with the different conclusions that the small groups um, came up with. And I thought it was a great idea, efficient way to get the information out and really move the group forward. And I, I got, remember getting to that meeting and putting it out there and saying, here's what we're going to do. And they kind of looked at me. And then one of them said, we don't want to do that. We think it's really important for, for us to hear what everybody says, and we don't want to break up into small groups. And it was a real aha moment for me. I thought, well, wait a minute. They know what they need better than I know what they need. So I think it was, and that was one example of many experiences I had where a group would say to me, no, we want to figure this out in our own way. So kind of like what you were saying, Eric, um, mm -hmm. the group was saying to me that this isn't, um, this isn't working for us. Mm -hmm. And I also had um, knew about and had transitioned my interpersonal mediation practice to transformative. And I thought, well, what about taking those principles and applying them to, to intervention in group and community situations? Mm -hmm. So for both of you, the work was prior was more about you, it sounded like, and a method that you were bringing. And transformative dialogue is a contrast to that. So in what ways is it a contrast? How close mm -hmm. is it to what we call transformative mediation, for example? Well, there's two things that characterize transformative dialogue. On the one hand, um, you know, the way that we view conflict, uh, and secondly, also <clears throat> the value of allowing parties to make their own decisions. So the way we view conflict in transformative mediation or dialogue is uh, seeing it as a, as a, as a relational uh, thing where it's the conflict interaction that's important, not necessarily trying to find solutions 